how much can you talk about the hardware wallet and and, and why develop another one because cold cards pretty good you have to be quite techy ledger's very useful it obviously supports a bunch of other assets um blockstream have a hardware wallet the um, trezor has a wallet and there's lots of other new players what what new what is it new that this product will be bringing um well, i'd say really high level we're still really early in in creating great product experiences um you, you know I've, I've used trezors and ledgers and cold cards and all three are great products they've all demonstrated big improvements over five six seven eight years um but i think there's a lot a lot of room to improve even more more so um because even today uh, an experience where you have a customer has to um write down 24 words and then figure out what to do with it that sort of opens up a pandora's box of like secure peace you know it doesn't really create peace of mind for customers like what do i do with this do i put it in the safe a bank deposit do i split it up in multiple locations it just opens up all the, all these questions um with the block hardware wallet it, it's framed as a hardware wallet but it also has a software wallet that comes along with it and and the current product thinking not a final decision but that it would be a two of three multi-sig wallet which some of your listeners are, or most of your listeners are probably familiar with but most wallets don't come out of the box by default or even required to be two of three and that that's that's the, the thinking with with this wallet and and th- there will be some people listening who won't understand what multi-sig is just give a sure quick introduction so um I mean, the user benefits, number one, you, you don't need to write down 24 words when you're setting up your, your hardware wallet. So the, the onboarding experience, the, the, when you are buy this new hardware wallet and set it up, it should be much, much simpler. Um, if you happen to lose your hardware wallet, you have not lost your Bitcoin because you only need to, there's three different private keys um, that are securing your Bitcoin, not just one. So if you do lose your hardware wallet or it malfunctions somehow, you have two other keys uh, that you can recover from. The other two keys would be stored one on your phone and one in the cloud with block, so with a, a, a third party. So you still have you have control as the customer of, of your Bitcoin because you have two of the three keys, and two of the three need to be used to, to spend your Bitcoin. And, and if you did lose one key, you would be able to rotate that out with the other two? Correct. And, and then... Um, it also, that configuration has a nice property that you could have one wallet that is both your savings and your spending wallet. So from your phone, your experience pay- making payments like lightning payments from a wallet would be very similar to Cash App or Venmo or sort of a one-click experience. You don't even have to know about keys, multi-sig, any of these technical details, but under the hood, one key on your phone and one key in the cloud is doing the, is signing the transaction for the payment. But you as a user, you just click a button, maybe do like a touch ID or face ID to, to confirm it, and that's it. Um, but if someone were to um, access your phone, they can't drain your savings account because the server, the block server, um, actually puts a, like a, a limit on spending with those two keys. Okay. So the only way you can spend all your savings is, ah. is if you go get your hardware wallet out of your safe or bank safe deposit box or some less accessible but more secure location. So it's a beautiful mix of you still get all the benefits of self-sovereignty. You're in control of your Bitcoin uh, block or no third party is. You get the security of this hardware wallet that's tucked away and you're not carrying around with you. But you get the ease of use for payments as you come to expect from any kind of mobile app on your phone. Uh, Would it be a single, would it still be two essentially wallets though? You would move or it would would be a single wallet. So it it just controls a spend. So maybe there's like a, what would it be a daily limit or something or other? Yeah, to be decided. To, to be decided, but you can imagine many many different things. I mean, it could be there would be defaults, and maybe the user can override it. Who who knows? I mean, that that team will figure that out. But say if you have ten million dollars of Bitcoin <laughs> in your wallet, but you have a daily spend limit of two thousand dollars, but if you had to go and buy something big like a house, and you needed to spend a million dollars of Bitcoin, you would have to go and get that hardware wallet to sign that one. That's correct. Okay, there is still that would make me think of one thing. Just as somebody who has, I use Casa for example, they're multi sig. Um, you still have if someone gets into it, 
the ability to maybe see, even if they can't spend, they can see the balance. With, um, be, because it's multi-sig? Well, no, because the, the wallet will have a balance. So you might not be able to spend oh, without it, the hardware wallet, right. but, but it would show you the balance. If, if, they, if someone accesses your phone. Yeah, so one of the things, the benefits of two wallets, say, for, that I have is like having Casa and then a separate one is I actually withdraw from Casa into the separate one, and the separate one never has a particularly high balance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a good point. That, although that's a detail that could be resolved. I mean, it could be... A, a hidden balance within the app. You, have, yeah. you might have to go through, you know, multiple steps to to, to view it. M maybe even as a user, m maybe there could be an option to disable viewing that number from your phone. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's an important topic that needs to be, or issue that needs to be addressed. But I think it could be addressed, even if you have a single, like un under the hood, it's a single wallet. Because the, the 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 customer might not even actually know there's only one wallet <laughs> under the hood. They might they might even perceive it as two wallets. But I think it's important. To have a single wallet under under the hood because it allows Bitcoin to scale better. Um, it, it, it's a problem if each each person has to have mul multiple wallets. I mean, it's a problem for both them as an individual because they're managing two different wallets and under the hood UTXOs and things like that. Um, and then, but it's, it from a network overall system perspective, it also scales better if there's just one wallet per person. But it's quite neat because. One of the things when you talk, when you try and explain multi-sig to people, it's like, well, yeah, because with a single signature, you have you know, one private key, but when you, and, you know, if you have a multi-sig, you have to have two of two or three, and already they're like, what do you want about? Yeah. This is like, you send small amounts from your phone, and with large amounts, you plug in your wallet. You don't really need to explain those things. Yeah, I think, I mean, the hope uh, is that, it's a very simple set of process for this hardware wallet. You just tuck it away in a safe or a secure spot and don't have to really think about it um, for a while. And then your Bitcoin experience in your phone feels like a very simple single sig um, you know, experience. But again, as an end user, you don't have to really think about um, multi-sig or keys or anything like that when you're using your, the app on the phone. And if you lost your phone, you can get a new phone and you can restore from the cloud and the hardware. Yeah, the key, I mean, again, this is a product detail to be yeah. decided, but at least in theory, the key that's on the phone could be automatically backed up in the cloud. Um, so you get the benefit of that extra backup. But again, um, with limited uh, security cost, because even if someone accessed that key in the cloud, they'd only have one of the three keys. Sounds like a great product. Yeah, so, I mean, I think it's... Um, I think there's clear opportunity for innovation in the space mm -hmm. to create way better um, non-custodial wallet experiences for for mainstream users, uh, and I think this product could could potentially do that. Um, but just the the general design framework, any anyone could could build that out. So I, th I think it's promising. I think one thing you want to talk about today is like decentralization and maybe what are some of the centralization pressures. Well, certainly one in Bitcoin is if it's too hard. To manage your own keys, which it, even today it, it is too hard for people. Uh -huh. That we wind up in a world in which just a few global custodians hold all the keys, and that's unlikely to result in the Bitcoin that we know and love and want to see for the world. So it's very important that a sizable percentage of Bitcoin users are, um, you know, controlling their own keys.